Can I just go? Yeah, you're ready. Uh, yeah. Come over here while you guys are finishing. So I also was interested in the danceability uh, measure and uh, was curious about not how it shows how we're thinking, but also our behaviors and eventually what's happening in the economy. Uh, there's, and first before I go further, past performance is not indicative of future returns. So there's something called the hemline index, which says that as skirts get shorter, the economy gets better and vice versa. So I wanted to do the same thing with uh, the danceability index. The theory that if uh, we're dancing without moderation, there's a peak of irrational exuberance. When we're dancing too much, the market may be overvalued and we're ready for a crash. So I took uh, New York City's top five songs going back historically on a weekly basis. I created a moving uh, five-week uh, moving average of that. And then I looked up the danceability from Echo Nest. Um, this is the moving average of danceability over time in New York. And here's the S&P during that time. We, of course, can bucket off the danceability score and look at the return on, you know, the box plot. Um, and, of course, we can data mine that, as you can in finance, to come up with a rule. So if uh, the danceability index is greater than 60, or 0.6, then we sell. Otherwise, we hold the S&P. So the red line here is the S&P. Black line is if we use this dance strategy. Um, as you can see, we avoid some major drawdowns. Uh, do pretty well. We have net cumulative return over 20 months or so of 80% approximately. 44% uh, annualized return and a 1.8 sharp ratio. So please see me if you're interested in this.